Today, we're going to see how you can manage your Webflow CMS on a more powerful, supercharged ad table like UI called ROI. Webflow is amazing for building websites quickly in low code, but the Webflow CMS UI itself is very limited in what it can do. You only have a limited set of field types that you can enter, and you also need to manually copy paste data from other places that you might have. It doesn't integrate into other tools. Say, suppose you want to generate content with AI. And also, importantly, you need to use the Webflow CMS seat based pricing to invite members and give them access to the CMS to be able to do anything, including small changes and edits to your existing content. Roy is an open source, low code backend platform that can supercharge your Webflow CMS management by unlocking powerful fields like markdown, AI generated content, automatic generation of thumbnail images, unlimited users in the free tier to collaborate with on the data and contribute towards your content and so much more. So let's get started and see how this is possible. Okay, so first you need to make the Webflow website. You can start from scratch or if you already have a Webflow website with CMS in it, you can start from there. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll start from scratch. To make things more convenient, we actually have a template that you can simply clone and try it out. So here on webflow.com slash Roy, we have the very basic blog template. Let's go ahead and clone this, give this a name and create the site. Once you're done, you can actually go here to the CMS collection section and look at this blog CMS. If you go into the setting, you'll see that it has a collection ID a bunch of fields, name slug that are required fields, and a bunch of other custom fields. So now that you have a basic website on Webflow, let's go ahead and see how we can connect this to a table on Roy and manage via that. So let's go over to the Roy website, roy.io. As you can see, Roy is a low-code backend platform that lets you manage your data on a spreadsheet like UI and build any automation on top of it visually in a no code style experience. And all your data is actually stored on Google Cloud in your own Firebase project. So that unlocks a lot more powerful things, which we will see shortly. So from the website, you can set up your ROI app. Step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your workspace and project is linked in the description. Okay, so once you're done on the ROI project, you can see all the templates that we have. You can search for the Webflow templates and specifically look for the Webflow CMS one. This template walks you through a guided process on how you can connect your table to your Webflow CMS. So let's begin. First, you need to give your table on Roy a name. Let's go with the default suggested ones. Once the table is created, you need to add your Webflow API key. You can get this API key by going to your Webflow projects site settings and under integrations, scroll all the way to the API access section. Here you can click generate API token and copy over this API key. Okay, so on Roy, you can store your API key securely on your own Google Cloud project. But this, what we mean is click this add key in secret manager button, which takes you to your Google Cloud project. Here you give your secret a name. Let's call this Webflow because that's the suggested name. If you are changing this, then you need to make changes in the backend code as well that I will show later. But for now, let's just give it the small case Webflow name that is as per the suggestion. Now paste your secret value that you copied over and click create secret. Once this is done, you can come back here, click refresh. There you see the Webflow one that you just created and set that as a secret. Next, you need to supply the Webflow CMS collection ID. So go back to your Webflow and from your CMS section, under the CMS that you are trying to connect to, 
you can see the collection ID here. Let's copy that over and just simply paste it. All right, next we have to deploy some cloud functions. These are cloud functions that are pre-built and ready to be used and you don't need to do any code changes. So here we have ability for you to write your blog in Markdown and this cloud function automatically converts it into a rich text. This is optional for you to use. If you're not using Markdown, you can skip it. But for the purpose of completion, let's click deploy. This takes a couple of minutes, but we can actually proceed. We don't have to wait for this to complete. All right. In the next step, we actually have a webhook that needs to deploy. What this webhook does, it listens to updates from Webflow and gives you a status update on your table. So especially when your new rows are entered into Webflow CMS, this webhook notifies you that, hey, that is actually updated. So let's go ahead and publish that as well. All right, so now you're successfully set up with the complete template. So let's click finish. As you can see, here is a blank table with a bunch of columns that are connected to your Webflow's template. Now, because we are using the template, each of the fields on the Webflow CMS are mapped to this table already. But if you're using your own CMS or adding new fields, that's quite easy to do as well. We'll see how to do that shortly. But before that, let's see what each of these columns mean. Now, the title is self-explanatory. It's connected to the title field. That is the name field here. And then you have a button, which is an action button called publish. What this action button does is if you go into the column config, that this action button, first of all, says that these are the fields that are required before you're able to publish this entry into the Webflow CMS. And if you go into the action here, you'll see that here is a pre-built cloud function that you don't need to make any changes to, but it's good to know what is going on. So the Webflow secret that you added earlier, it's available here. If you decided to name it something else, you just need to make the change here and click update. And with this secret, it's able to write to the collection ID that you mentioned during the setup process. And again, if you want to change this collection ID after the setup, you can simply go ahead here and add your collection ID in quotes like this. Okay, for now, let's just keep it as it is. Finally, here you have a bunch of fields. So each row of rowy title is mapped to the name field. The Webflow slug, which is what the Webflow shows up in the URL, is mapped to the slug field. Same for other things like summary and blog content. So if you go back to the Webflow, you'll see there's a summary field, there's a content field, and there is a thumbnail field, which is an image field, and that's mapped here as well. If you want to add any more fields on Webflow and Roe, that's easy to do. All that you need to do is add that field here. Roe supports over 35 plus field types and you can map them at this action button of how you want to publish it and which field you want to map it to on Webflow. Okay, let's give it a try. So let's give this a name, a title, say for example, blog on Yang Chain using Roy in you know code, something like that. Let's give this a slug called Roy and chain, and let's give it a summary, a short blog on Roy low code platform and Lang chain template. All right. So here in the content, you can actually write the content in Markdown. Let's make this full screen, and let's say. Test, test blog. You can even write some code blog like this. So you can write any blog in a Markdown format and then that gets stored. Interestingly, as you can see, as soon as you finish typing this, this is the converted rich text value. So if I open this here on the side panel, you can see that the rich text value for this blog is immediately available because Webflow only supports rich text. And so Roy takes care of that conversion from Markdown to rich text because this field here is a derivative column, which we initially deployed during the setup process, if you recall. 
And if you go to the column config, you'll see here that this field is listening to the content field, the markdown field, and it's running a piece of code every time the content field is changing. So this uses an NPM module called Showdown, which converts the markdown into a rich text HTML and the output is a rich text. Now, you don't need to know all of this code here because we have already done the work for you and you're just using it as a template. But say, suppose you want to make some more custom changes to this, you have full flexibility to do so. You can come in and type here, you can take code suggestions from chat GPT and simply paste it here. And that's super powerful. All right, so let's just close that. You can even pop in some images for your OG file here. If you look at the publish again, you'll see that the OG image is connected to the thumbnail. That means you will be able to get this in the thumbnail in your blog. All right, so we have most of the content done. Let's click publish and see what happens. Okay, so it's saying missing field live. So that means only if this is live, you're able to publish. So that's just a logic inside this column config. You can change it if you don't want that. You can make any other fields required before you publish. So that way you're not missing out some information before publishing. So as you can see here, live is one of the required fields. So, okay. So now that we have made it live, let's click publish and see what's going on. Okay, so it says successfully published, but if we go back here to the blog, it's actually not here. So to dig into what's happening, let's go to the cloud logs and look at the column publish and see what exactly is going on. So as you can see here, there is a error message here saying conflict with server data the item can't be published if the site is not published because we just cloned this webflow website it's never published the api of webflow doesn't work without that publishing so using this log you are able to identify what the issue is so let's go back to webflow and simply hit publish all right so if i come back here to roy and click publish again. It says successfully published. Let's go to the blogs here. And hey, there you go. Blog on LangChain using Roe in low code is already available here. If you can go inside this, you can see that there is rich text content. There is the thumbnail. So that's great. Now you can actually manage this data from Roe. You can add as many entries to Webflow as you want. You can actually invite your team members to Roy to collaborate on this data very easily using this members section here. You can give them granular access of, hey, they can only read the data, write the data, and so on. And we have a very generous free tier where you can invite any number of team members to your project and they can collaborate on this data. And that way you don't have to invite them to Webflow and worry about messing up of your website and giving them more paid access and things like that. Okay, now let's quickly see how it'll work if you need to add a new field. So let's say if you want to add a field called URL. And let's save this field. And let's go back to Roy and create a new column. Let's call this URL as well. And Roy supports 35 plus column types. We even have Flexible ones like JSON, code, and other things. For now, let's just pick URL and click Add. Now, what you need to do is on this Publish Action button, you need to publish this newly added URL field as well. So add another entry and map this to the ROI field of row.url and click Update. Now, if you add a value here and click publish. There you go, it's successfully published to Webflow. To show you a bit more powerful features that you can build with Rui, I would like to show you our own blog. We dog food our own product a lot at Rui, so all the blogs that you see here on our website is on Webflow. 
So you can see the Webflow CMS looks like this, but obviously it's hard to manage like this. Individual content, if you have to go inside and manage these images, etc., it becomes a bit chaotic, especially if you want to be able to do it in a team. So that's why we have connected this to the ROE's blog table. So specific people who have access can come in and change different aspects of the blog content. There are a few cool columns that I would like to highlight here. For example, this column here is an auto-generated image column. So if you drop an image here, this image, which is the open graph image that's used for SEO purposes, is automatically generated. This is a derivative column. So if I go to this derivative column and see that it's listening to the OG image column, which is this original image. And if you look at the code block here, you can create a design on Figma, export this as an SVG, and then use this code block for embedding this image into your open graph image. So if you'd like a tutorial specifically on this, on how you can create these columns, let us know in the comments and we'll link you to that. But what is the advantage of this is this image then is uploaded to your Webflow CMS and then can be used in places like this on this card. And if you share this link, the Open Graph image is actually coming in from here. You can also have columns connected to OpenAI to generate content. So for example, if you have to generate summary from your long blog, you can do that by making a derivative column that listens to this blog content and uses OpenAI API key to generate your summary. You can essentially build any automation you like using any NPM packages or APIs. And the interesting thing is if you open the side panel here and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see this document path here, which is actually linked to your own database on Firestore. All the data that you manage on ROI is actually stored on your own Firebase project. That means you can use this data not only on Webflow CMS, but also use it on any other low-code, no-code tools that you're building with using APIs or if you're building on a front-end framework like Next.js or React app, you can directly work on the Firebase data and build your apps with ease. So give this a try. You can add as many columns you would like, map them to as many columns on your Webflow as you would want. And we have a lot of examples on demo.roe.io to give you more ideas of what you can do with Roe. We also have another Webflow template that submits all the form entries from Webflow directly to ROI and stores them on Firestore. That way you can avoid being limited by the number of form submissions you can have. If you'd like to see this tutorial, it's linked in the description. If you have any questions, join our Discord. It's a growing community of over 2,000 no-code, low-code makers, builders, so we can answer your questions and get you sorted. Looking forward to see what you build with this. Leave a comment and let us know what you would like to see next. Thank you.